All right, guys, welcome to That's Your Garbage Board Game Reviews. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Ticket to Ride Europe. With me I have Jay. Yep, I exist. I'm Mike, and uh, we're pretty much going to go through the components, the gameplay, what we think of the game, and then we're going to compare it to the original Ticket to Ride game. Let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to go over the basic components of the game. Essentially, you get one map, which you can see right in front of you. Uh, the map pretty much has all the different colors on it, signifying which cards you need to uh, claim those routes. We'll get to that later. Uh, around the board, you'll see a scoring track. And uh, the scoring track is pretty much kept score by the different colors of the scoring markers right here. Yeah. Um, you get these trains for every different color. Uh, essentially, there are 45 for each person. So black, red, yellow, blue, and green. Uh, so it's 240 in total. Uh, you get 15 colored train stations. The train station just looks like this. They obviously come in fancy. different shapes. And, well, not different yeah. shapes, but different colors. Different colors as well. And we'll explain how these work later on. You get 158 illustrated cards. Yes. And Jay's going to pull those out now. These are essentially the cards that you use to progress through the game. Yeah. So I hope you As you can see, Mike did not shuffle them quite well. But it's fine. I didn't shuffle them. That's fine. And then you get uh, the rule book. Which is right here. Nicely illustrated rule book. Yes. And uh, there. that's pretty much it. The rule book's actually only seven pages long. So it's a very complicated game to learn. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about... Well, there's also the destination cards. Oh, that's cards right. There's well. the destination cards. And the destination cards are split up. Uh, we now have short and long destinations. So the short ones are signified by this like tan color. Long ones are this bluey color. And uh, we're going to get to the gameplay. Okay, so first we're going to talk about setting up the game before we actually get to the gameplay part of the game. When you start, you give every person basically four to five of each piece of their color. Also, you know, you give them their score markers, which you'll just be putting on the board. And you give them their train stations, which there are three of each. Now, the first thing you're going to do when you start up the game is you're going to deal each player four of the train cards each. Obviously, you're going to have to shuffle them, shuffle them before that, but... Once each person has four of the train cards each, you then create a card pool like you see here. The card pool is used to pick up train cards later on in the game. And then you give people three short destination cards, shuffle them and put them face down over here. And each player also gets one long destination card as well, but they only get one destination card that is long for each game. So if you're playing with five people, pretty much five of the six destination cards will be used and one will be put away. Or if you're only playing with two people, then two will be used and the rest will be put away. And that's pretty much how you set up the game. Alright, so the object of Ticket to Ride Europe is to get the most points by the end of the game. The end of the game happens once a player is only left with two of these little cards here left. Now, once you only have two cards left, it triggers a last turn scenario in which every player gets one more turn, and then they calculate up all their points and see who wins. Now, there's a few ways to get points in Ticket to Ride Europe. The most uh, common one is, get, is uh, claiming a route like this. Each route has a specific amount of points attached to it depending on the size of the route. So, for an example, a three-space a three route is four points, whereas a four-space route would be seven points. Another way to gain points is completing destination cards, like these ones on the destination deck. Now, once you complete a destination, you don't actually have to tell someone what that, that you completed the destination. You just claim the points at the end of the game. So, say if you, if you claim this one, you get 20 points at the end of the game. Another way to get points is having the longest path at the end of the game, which will get you 10 points at the end of the game right here. And another way to get points after that would be not using these train stations. Now, for each train station you don't use at the end of the game, you get 4 points. Okay, so during each of your turns, you can only do one of the following things. You can either draw a train card, which essentially the train card you'll see here. Uh, you could draw two from the top here and those two will come to your hand. Or you can take two cards from the pool here that we see face down. So say I need two orange ones, I could take two. And if I did that, two more would refresh it. Or I could take one locomotive card. Now, something that's really cool that could happen is that if you draw two from the top and you end up, one ended up being a locomotive card, you could actually have drawn a regular card and a locomotive. Um, so that's something that happens randomly sometimes, which is a nice little bonus. Sometimes you draw two, but that's only if it hasn't been shuffled well. Um, so essentially, that's drawing the cards. Then you can claim a route, which essentially we'll do right here. So you'll look at your hand, you'll go, wow, I have four yellows, 
and a locomotive. So you could decide. At this point, you have four yellows, so you don't need to. But you'll pretty much give the four yellows, and they'll go into a discard pile, which gets shuffled up after uh, they've run out of cards in the pool. And you'll essentially put down your trains on the board, and that's claiming a route for that turn. Now, if you've decided that you only had three yellows in your card, you could use the locomotive card as a wild card, so it has all the colors on it. That essentially allow you to use every, it could be used anywhere, but also locomotive cards are very valuable for when you're doing these things right here. Uh, you actually need one locomotive and two of the same color to build it. Um, and those are sp like spread out throughout the board. Like from here to go from London to Amsterdam, you actually need two locomotive cards to build that. So locomotive cards are actually very valuable. Uh, the third thing you could do is you can draw a destination deck. Um, pretty much you'll draw three cards from the destination deck. You have to keep one of the cards that were drawn. You can't discard all of them. So if you have more in your hand, you can't combine the pool and then drop all of them to get down to one. Out of the three that you pick up, you need to discard down to... You can keep all of them, but you can only discard down to one. Uh, essentially, the reason why they have this rule is because people will just keep picking up the ones they, they keep going until they get ones they like. And essentially, there will be no negative to it. But there is a negative because for every card in your hand that you haven't completed, it actually minuses points. So that's something for the end of the game. And then you can build a train station. So as you can see here, we have the blue and the red. And uh, they say I wanted to get to Wilno to complete one of my cards. So I would build one of these, which cost me just one train card of any color for the first one. The second one, it's two train, two train cards of any color. And the third one's three train cards of any color. Essentially, you'll put that down on the board right over there. And now this allows you to use any other person's uh, train route coming out of this area. So for this one, I'm using it to go to Wilno. So that'll connect me from, say, Berlin to Wilno. And that's pretty much your game turns. You can do one of those things every turn. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the differences between the original Ticket to Ride and Ticket to Ride Europe. As you can see here... We have the original map of Ticket to Ride here. This is uh, this is just the original North American Ticket to Ride, which is you know the USA version. The map is a lot more open. There's less. There's more options for players. Like there's double routes, like you could see here, throughout specific areas, giving people more options to get through. There's a lot more double routes. Mm -hmm. There's also like to to get from here to here, here to here. There's a lot more option between it. Mm -hmm. um, as well as over here, there's a lot of cluster. A lot of a lot, you could pretty much easily do a few two three routes to get across. Whereas in the Europe one, you don't really have that much option. Yeah. In the Europe one, things are a little bit more spread out. Routes are actually longer than... There's a lot more longer routes in this version. And uh, we actually didn't talk about this in the gameplay, but there's another difference, is, which is the tunnels. Now, tunnels are actually uh, done a different way. So yeah, essentially how the tunnels work... Um, so say I was going to claim this tunnel here to go from Zurich to uh, Munich. Uh, so essentially how I would do that is I would play my two yellow cards as normal. And then from there, essentially what I would do is we would have to draw three cards. Now this doesn't matter how long the distance is. Even if you're doing like a 3-1 or a 4-1 or this fancy 6-1. It doesn't make a difference. You'd have to play out as many as you need. And then you always draw three cards from the top. And I'd have to match from the cards in my hand uh, to those cards there. Essentially, I can't. So... You could play locomotive cards, but I don't have any blues, so I would essentially fail. So what happened is I would take my two yellow cards back and my locomotive card back. Those would get discarded, and my turn would be over. Uh, if I would have succeeded, then essentially I would lose the three cards, the two cards I played here, plus the three cards that I would have played to match, and I would have lost. I would have used everything in order to build it. Uh, when you fail like I did, you only actually lose. Uh, you don't actually lose anything. You just lose that turn, and then everyone knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Another main difference in this version is that it's a lot he it's a lot harder to get roots naturally, but to compensate for that, they've added the train stations, which, like we said earlier, will allow you to use someone else's route to complete your tickets. Now, aside from that, there is also the big change being that only small routes can be drawn later on in the game, mm -hmm. since everyone only gets one long route at the start of the game. Yeah, in the first game, if somebody would have gotten someone, because they, they would be mixed in together for the for the original game, 
So essentially, if you would have gotten a long route, you're at a big advantage over someone who just would have gotten the short routes because completing a long route would be a lot easier in the first game and you would have gotten a significantly more points. Another small difference between this version and the uh, and the original is that there's no longer any five car routes. Now you only see like there's a bunch of fours and there's a few sixes and even one eight, but there are no more five car routes. So overall, we find this game to be, it has a lot more rules than the first one, yeah. but that's not to say it's actually more complicated. We don't think it's more complicated at all. Uh, this is actually one of the easier games that we play uh, between us and a few friends. And it's actually very simple to explain to other people how to play. Um, so we actually recommend it as like a very, you know, pull out, bust it out, play it, and uh, have a good time. Mm -hmm. It's it's easy to learn, hard to master. There's a lot. There's not as much tension as you would expect in a game like Monopoly, but there's a, dis there's a significant amount of tension because, you know, people might block you in your routes, but maybe you'll have enough of these train stations to still complete your routes and... You know, it's it's all about competition to get the most routes, the most destinations, and the longest route. Uh, another thing is we have a lot of people that when we play, they do something called card hoarding, where they'll just go through a whole bunch of games, picking up a whole bunch of turns, just picking up cards, and then throwing them all down like every sporadic turn after that. Uh, so they, they claim the board really quick, which makes for a very, like, tension for when people need to start playing their cards. But it's, it's a low amount of tension compared to other games we've played. Yeah, and people who do that run the risk of having the routes that they're trying to get taken up by the time they actually have the cards to do it. So, And then the people who are just always building up, every time you can kind of see what they're doing and follow where they're building, and you can try and block them. Yeah. The game so is very risk-rewards. Yeah, it's risk-rewards, a lot of competition in the game. Uh, we really enjoy it. It's definitely one of the ones we like to just pull out when we have an extra 30 to 60 minutes because that's really all it takes to play. You can get through games really quick. We highly recommend playing the game with five people. Four is still really good. Uh, as you go lower, the game kind of loses its flair a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much it. We're going to give the game an 8 out of 10. And that's your garbage. Components, the gameplay, what we think of the game, and then we're going to compare it to the original Ticket to Ride game. Let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to go over the basic components of the game. Essentially, you get one map, the colors of the scoring markers right here. Yeah. Um, you get these trains for every different color. Uh, essentially, there are 45 for each person. So black, red, yellow, blue. All right, guys, welcome to That's Your Garbage Board Game Reviews. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Ticket to Ride Europe. With me, I have Jay. Yep, I exist. I'm Mike, and uh, we're pretty much going to go through the blue and green. Uh, so it's 240 in total. Uh, you get 15 colored train stations. The train station just looks like this. They yeah, obviously come fancy. in different shapes. And, well, not different yeah. shapes, but different colors. Different colors as well, and we'll explain how these work later on. But you can see right in front of you, uh, the map pretty much has all the different colors on it, signifying which cards you need to uh, claim those routes. We'll get to that later. Uh, around the board, you'll see a scoring track, and uh, the scoring track is pretty much kept score by the different. 